Today is Friday, June 3rd, 2022. Welcome to today's daily prayers. Today, we grieve another mass shooting. This one in Tulsa, Oklahoma. May God have mercy. Let us pray. Almighty God, send your Holy Spirit upon us so that we may perfectly love you and faithfully follow you today and always. In the name and spirit of Christ, amen. Our psalm this week is selected verses from Psalm 107. Give thanks to true life, because God is good, because God's faithful love lasts forever. That's what those who are redeemed by true life say, the ones God redeemed from the power of their enemies, the ones God gathered from various countries from east and west, north and south. Some of the redeemed had been sitting in darkness and deep gloom. They were prisoners suffering in chains because they had disobeyed God's instructions and rejected the Most High's plans. So God humbled them with hard work. They stumbled, and there was no one to help them. So they cried out to true life in their distress, and God saved them from their desperate circumstances. God brought them out from the darkness and deep gloom, God shattered their chains. Let them thank true life for God's faithful love and God's wondrous works for all people. Because God has shattered bronze doors and split iron bars in two. Some of the redeemed were fools because of their sinful ways. They suffered because of their wickedness. They had absolutely no appetite for food. They had arrived at death's gates. So they cried out to true life in their distress, and God saved them from their desperate circumstances. God gave the order and healed them. God rescued them from their pit. Let them thank God for God's faithful love and God's wondrous works for all people. Let them offer thanksgiving sacrifices and declare what God has done in songs of joy. God turns rivers into desert, watery springs into thirsty ground, fruitful land into unproductive dirt when its inhabitants are wicked. But God can also turn the desert into watery pools, thirsty ground into watery springs where God settles the hungry. They even build a city and live there. They plant fields and vineyards and obtain a fruitful harvest. God blesses them, and they become many. God won't even let their cattle diminish. 
But when they do diminish, when they're brought down by oppression, trouble, and grief, God pours contempt on their leaders, making them wander aimlessly in the wastelands. But God raises the needy from their suffering. God makes their families as numerous as sheep. Those who do right see it and celebrate. But every wicked person shuts their mouth. Whoever is wise will pay attention to these things, carefully considering true life's faithful love. Our daily scripture is Ephesians 4, 17 through 5, 2. So now, there isn't any condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. The law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set you free from the law of sin and death. God has done what was impossible for the law, since it was weak because of selfishness. God condemned sin in the body by sending God's own Son to deal with sin in the same body as humans who are controlled by sin. God did this so that the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us. Now, the way we live is based on the Spirit, not based on selfishness. People whose lives are based on selfishness think about selfish things. But people whose lives are based on the Spirit think about things that are related to the Spirit. The attitude that comes from selfishness leads to death. But the attitude that comes from the Spirit leads to life and peace. So the attitude that comes from selfishness is hostile to God. It doesn't submit to God's law because it can't. People who are self-centered aren't able to please God. But you aren't self-centered. Instead, you are in the Spirit if, in fact, God's Spirit lives in you. If anyone doesn't have the Spirit of Christ, they don't belong to Christ. If Christ is in you, the Spirit is your life because of God's righteousness. But the body is dead because of sin. If the Spirit of the one who raised Jesus from the dead lives in you, the one who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your human bodies also through Christ's Spirit that lives in you. So then, brothers and sisters, we have an obligation, but it isn't an obligation to ourselves to live our lives on the basis of selfishness. If you live on the basis of selfishness, you are going to die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the actions of the body, you will live. All who are led by God's Spirit are God's sons and daughters. You didn't receive a spirit of slavery to lead you back again into fear, but you received a spirit that shows you are adopted as God's children. With this spirit, we cry, Abba, Father. The same spirit agrees with our spirit, that we are God's children. But if we are children, we are also heirs. We are God's heirs, 
and fellow heirs with Christ, if we really suffer with him, so that we can also be glorified with him. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Because we have been saved by Christ, we are now free to live in obedience to love rather than to the law. What is the difference? How are you living in obedience to love? This love, which grows out of God's love for us, leads us to let go of our selfish ways and embrace the spirit of community. We are called to participate in loving community with those around us. How are you doing so? What are you finding difficult in such a life? Through the Spirit of God abiding in us, we are children of God, heirs to all that comes from God along with Christ. What does that mean to you? What are some things you are heir to because of your relationship with Christ? Our reading today comes from The Church by Hans Kuhn. The Spirit is thus the earthly presence of the glorified Lord. In the Spirit, Christ becomes Lord of his Church. And in the Spirit, the resurrected Lord acts both in the community and the individual. The power of his resurrection is more than a power of ecstasy and miracle. It produces a new creation. The Spirit opens up for the believer the way to the saving action of God in Christ. She does this not as a magic power over which humanity cannot re resist. She creates the possibility of our replying with a responsible and conscious affirmative. The Spirit gives us, through the knowledge of the crucified Christ, the realization that in Jesus Christ, God acted for him. The Spirit gives faith in the cross and resurrection of Christ and gives the power to live a life of faith. She is the spirit of faith. The spirit is not humanity's own potential, but entirely the gift, the power, and strength of God. The Holy Spirit, as God's spirit, 
must be distinguished from humanity's own spirit, since she is the Holy Spirit, free from all sin. The Holy Spirit is always entirely God's spirit and is not absorbed into the individual spirit of the person. At the same time, God's spirit can win power and dominion over us so that we become our inner self, so that a person no longer lives by their own strength, but by God's. In this way, God's spirit does not work as in the Gnostic view as an automatically divinizing substance. The spirit is the power which creates faith and the norm according to which the believer is constantly summoned to live. If we live by the spirit, let us also walk by the spirit. Let us pray. Abba, Father, thank you for accepting us as your children, for making us brothers and sisters with and in Christ. Help us to live as your children in this world, sharing your gifts and your love with others. May others see you when they look at us and experience your grace through us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. May others hear your voice when we speak and be drawn to follow your way. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. May others experience your peace when they encounter us and thereby choose to demonstrate that peace in their own lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Receive this benediction. Be filled with hope, joy, and peace by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace.